How you doing? I'm good. How's it going? I don't know why I always, I, I, I'll call you Melissa Ford. Like, nobody calls me Fat Joe Cartagena. <laughs> you know, um, everyone calls me by my full name. They always call me Melissa Ford. I'm like, you could call me Melly Mel. You could call Machine Gun Melly. <laughs> like, you know, Missy. Uh, my middle name is Savannah, so, you know, there's a small pocket of friends that call me Savannah or Savvy, but a lot of people just refer to me by my whole government. You know, you said Missy. I, I want to tell a funny story. Yesterday, it was Timberland's birthday, mm -hmm. and we was on this Zoom that if somebody was a clout chaser or whatever, man, they would have loved this Zoom. It was Justin Timberlake. It was P. Diddy. It was... Um, Jay was on there, it was me, it was Missy, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. And yeah. It was a special birthday for Tim. So, yeah. I, I, you know, all these years, I thought that Missy Elliott had took a shot at me where she was like, I like Joe, but he's sloppy, right? <laughs> and so I got the courage to ask her on the Zoom. I said, yo, Missy, what you think, call it, what you talking about me when you said I like Joe, but he's sloppy? Mm. And she was like, if if you want to say it's about you, you can say that, Joe. But I wasn't even thinking about you. I said, oh, Missy, I'm not going to say it was if it wasn't. But uh, Melissa Ford, uh, I know you a very long time. Yes. Uh, it would be safe to say, and I did a lot of, today I stood home on the couch. I don't know why. Whenever I got, like, female guests, I really do my research because I don't want to look crazy or not be prepared or, you know, I don't know why. Any one of them that's ever come on here, Patty LaBelle, whoever you name, right? Like when Patty LaBelle came on here, I knew that Patty LaBelle did uh, uh, Richard Plyer's uh, Live on the Sunset Strip. Yeah. And she didn't get, they didn't show it, but she, yeah. like I do everything, right? Yeah, so, no, well, we appreciate that. Yeah, we definitely, so, we definitely appreciate that. Is it safe to say you're the original video vixen, uh, I guess the poster child of? Oh, I would go with the blueprint. Uh, I would go with the blueprint. And I would say that just because, um, you know, when I came up in, you know, music videos, you you know what they looked like at that time. They were they were major theatrical productions. You know, the budgets were fucking enormous. Um, I mean, we had carte blanche to do whatever we wanted. And like, like they look like movies, you know what I'm saying? So video models really had a starring role. Like we were like the silent movie stars of that time. And at the same time, it kind of, you know, uh, coincided with like the, you know, the rise of, of men's magazines, you know, black men's magazines, like uh, so, uh, uh, black men's magazine, SSX, um, double X, King. Like Candy, King. King, of course, I was, you know, the, the Bible basically. Um, and so those magazines gave us, um, gave us a name, you know, and gave us the opportunity to introduce ourselves to the world past just being, you know, pretty face tits and ass. Um, and so a lot of times, you know, especially with King Magazine, they would have real journalists interviewing us. So they would be asking some really, really, really thought provoking questions. And what a lot of people didn't really know about video models at the time was a lot of them were doing other things like they were in school, they were learning, you know, uh, they were going to school for a certain profession, like lawyers and medical school and, you know, whatever the case is. So the reality of the situation is, is that um, it was a, it was a very specific time, very specific era of doing music videos. I was I left school, I was studying forensic psychology. Um, you know, I wanted to be Clarice Starling, basically. Um, but then entertainment came knocking, and it was knocking loud. And so I basically used my leverage in one genre of entertainment, which was music video modeling. And I kind of, you know, I, I, I maximized my popularity. I started creating products. I started creating calendars. I started to create 
shit, I put my image on everything from shot glasses to, to playing cards to mouse pads to car air fresheners, you know? And so most girls were just appearing in music videos or appearing in, appearing in the covers of magazines or the pages of magazines or appearing in calendars. I took the bull by the horns and started to make a business out of my image. And once that happened, then I was able to leverage my popularity into another genre of entertainment, which was television hosting. So between the years of 2000 and 2004, I went from just music video modeling and being features in magazines was to being on, you know, one of the faces of BET, you know, and, and their on-air talent and ESPN and stars in black, you know, so uh, I kind of showed everybody how it did, was done. Did, 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 did that happen, like, naturally? Did you come in with an entrepreneurial mind or, or, or it was stuff was happening and you was like, I'm going to turn this into a business? Or could you come from Toronto? At the time, that was called T-Dot. We still it was, call it the T-Dot. Yo, it was the T-Dot. No, now they call it the 6666666. And so, yo, stop, stop. <laughs> listen, you know, you know, the, you yeah, know uh, the Car Carnell, yeah. fish out. And yeah. so you, you're, you're thrown, you're this beautiful girl and you're thrown into this, uh, Hip hop world, like because Toronto was very different than it is today, and you thrown in there, and you got these other video girls. You got the Gloria Valeses, the Superheads, the this, the you know. How did you manage to stay out of the uh, you know that that type of talk? Out of the fuck shit. Out yeah, because I never really heard your name in the fuck shit. It, my name was never in, in, in the fuck shit. Um, like, I wasn't a studio rat. Um, I, you, you just, you really never heard, you know, the, those stories did not accompany me because I was really about my business. But no, I didn't come into the game thinking, oh, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Like, shit just kind of happened accidentally. Nobody, th there was no footprints. There was no foundation. There was nobody to follow in the footsteps of. We were just we were just hot women being casted for videos and like on fucking yachts with Jay-Z drinking, you know, Cristal at the time. Like who the fuck thought that that was going to become a career? Not me, you know, um, Gloria had different plans for herself because she was a rapper, you know? So she mm. knew that she was going to leverage her popularity and take, and, and, you know, uh, ha have that help her music career. So everybody had their own kind of like, you know, motivations for what they personally wanted. But I don't think that anybody was really thinking anything about like, you know, turning this kind of like in, into a, a business. And just for context for everybody, Toronto, like Canada, we didn't get BET until like 1996 or 1997. So prior, wow. yeah, so prior to that, like I didn't know, really know the difference between a Puffy and a Biggie. And a, I, I didn't, I didn't really understand, you know, I didn't grow up on rap music or hip hop. I really didn't. I grew up, my mother was white. I was listening to Journey and Boston and Corey Hart and Pat Benatar, you know what I'm saying? And in my dad's big blue Pontiac with the eight track player, I was listening to Curtis Mayfield, Al Jarreau, Lou Rawls, um, Ella Fitzgerald, um, you know, like uh, John Coltrane, Miles Davis, and then, you know, my niece who liked to hang in the projects, she turned me on to like Guy and um, Alexandra O'Neill and stuff. So like my, um, you know, kind of like a, like a music Rolodex was extensive, but it didn't really include a lot of hip hop. So when I started doing music videos for the biggest hip hop artists, I truly didn't know who the fuck they were. Like, you know, I knew who Jay-Z was in theory, but it's not like it weighed upon me who he was, you know? I knew who Ghostface Killer was in theory when I did Share Shayla Ghost, but it didn't weigh upon me who the fuck he was and who Wu-Tang was. It, I didn't understand. When the, I weirdest, did the weirdest but beautiful cameo was the one in uh, Alicia Keys' video. That's one of my favorite. Uh, so you don't know my, and, then, and, it, and it was like, it was so different because every time we had seen you in the video, it was this sexy girl. I think, right, because I went back, I watched all the videos. I would, I always remembered you as the girl in Pharrell's ear 
um in the in the shake it fast like yeah. like that that was that's iconic to me when yeah. he was in his ear it was like damn that's a hot chick in Pharrell's ear yeah yeah I did I, you know what I did that video because I was broke um <laughs> I was running around the country the shake it um, fast so I would basically what happened was I had just gotten off tour with Cisco. So I was one of Cisco's lead dancers. Um, and I had been touring around the country. So you was dancing thong, 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 thong? Yeah, we were on stages all Man, over the we country. We love thong, 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 thong in the Bronx. I mean, everyone, that, you know what? We still play the barbecues for a reason. That shit is amazing. Um, so I just, after the tour ended, the tour ended in um, uh, Las Vegas. In, in Vegas. And so I just stayed in Vegas for like three, four weeks, just being 20 and getting into trouble and partying too much. And three weeks later, I was like, oh shit, I'm running out of money. I need to do something like, you know, and then X called me and he was just like, we want you to do a video for Mystical and with Pharrell. And I was just like, yep, yep, yep send the plane to, yes, let's do it. And I had no idea that that song was going to be the fucking massive hit that it was. You know, again, I, I wasn't really, you know, mystical. I was like, okay, I don't really know who that is. And people are like, what the fuck, Melissa? Like, that's it's just how Yeah, it but was. you were the go-to girl. And the, the, the thing that was unique about your time was that you would we would use the girls over and over again in the video. Yeah. yeah. And, and now it's like you use a girl one time, even if she's hot, then it's like use the girl that we never seen before. Yeah. At that time, it was like you wasn't hot if you ain't have the girl from the mystical video. Yeah. Or you didn't have the girl from uh uh it's getting hot in here. Like you yeah. know, you know yeah, there was some girls you wanted in the video. Yeah, there was a lot of competition amongst video directors to steal each other's girls, you know. Um, and the other reason for that was because of the magazines, the magazines and videos, they played a very, very specific role in our lives at that time. And they made us stars. And so you wanted to have the girl who was just in that video, who was just featured in King magazine as, um, you know, what, what was that feature that King used to do of like, who's next or whatever the case is, you know, you wanted that girl. I want that girl in my video. So you didn't kind of get tired of her social media has completely changed the game like we are we are so desensitized because we're so saturated with just so much imagery of this girl and that girl and this girl and that girl and this car it's too hard for just one girl to emerge out of out, out of the, the the millions at this point you know social media allows us to look at shit from like an international international perspective um but like to go back to your point like I wanted to do that Alicia Keys video because I wasn't the hot girl in the video, because it was theatrical. We were we were creating a scene from you know like uh, Mo's Alice, you know the TV show back in the day, Alice. So we were in a diner and Mo Mo's Def comes in and they have this little exchange and you know you don't know my name is one of Alicia Keys' best songs. Like it's such a feel. It's one, it's one of my favorite songs ever. Ever, ever. And I was so like, I love the fact that I got to be a part of that, you know, music video. Another music video that nobody knows that I was in because I was there just because I was uh, uh, there to perform the, uh, like, I can spit fire. So Eric Sermon's video, Hot Like Fire, I'm actually in the video spitting fire, but you don't really see me. So I was hired for that. Like a lot of times I could get hired to Yo. Be on a music Let me video, give you these even people, we, whenever we talk about something that nobody's ever heard before, it's called like a Joker moment on this show. Uh -huh. So let me give them a Joker moment. Uh, in Black uh, Black Sheep's video, Engine, Engine, number uh -huh. nine, on the new, before I rapped, I was in the crowd. They were my boys. So it wasn't like I was an extra, but I was an extra. And when, when the, if that chain go off the track, I pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. And yeah. uh, the other day I was watching uh, some throwback videos and I seen myself in the crowd. Um, and so we all been in videos, you know, trying to get our face out there, trying to get uh, seen. Um, you've always 
been very, very intelligent um, always. Yeah. Right? Maybe it's that's because... That, that's, that, that's that Canadian sensibility and your parents pushing you to pursue higher education kind of thing. They were like, yeah, congratulations on your fucking face. You know, what's what's your brain saying? That that was what life was like in, for me in Toronto, at least. And, 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 and this proved to be uh, the right thing for you because, you know, when I'm thinking about video girl, right? And mm -hmm. what I'm about to say is just no disrespect in the universe, right? Keep it going. But, yeah. No, no, it is no disrespect. For okay. But like to say, Kobe Bryant met his wife, Vanessa Bryant, in the video. I almost did that video. <laughs> you almost I've did always that. always thought. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you was like, damn. I mean, now, yo, you got to stop. <laughs> uh, uh, our good friend, Betty Boom. The, the, I don't know if people know, the lead girl in the Lean Back video mm -hmm. is Betty Boom's wife. He met her after um, Lean Back. Uh, Raven. Raven. Raven, right? yeah. And so, so you never had love in the video or looked at an artist like, yo, I could be Mrs. Never. Such and Such. Never, 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 never once, never. As a matter of fact, for the most part, um, I was uh, in a relationship for a lot of, a lot of that, you know? Like I was in a long-term relationship from like May, like March 2001, all the way, shit, to like 2004. So like, Jada could stock yourself out, um, you know, and even then before that, like, well, shit, being in a relationship, it was just like one, you know, leave one guy, be with another guy, blah, blah, blah. And that would be like nine months here, four years there, whatever. But I was always booed up during these music videos. So I never looked at So are audience. you are you are you the type of person that has to be booed up? Fuck like, no. Fuck no 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 no. Have you been single dope. like single for a while or you the like you there's people who have to be booed up. So if you break up and then you get with some it, it, No, that was that no, that was just like youth and just like, you know, just always just having somebody available like to be your boo and whatnot like I mean I love love but I um I'm I'm single I'm single now and I I fucking I love it I really 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 love it love you it. really um, really I'm, love being I single I really love I really love I love my freedom I really love my freedom I, I you know because yeah. because I watched the old interview of yours and you was like they was like yo what you want in the man and you was like I want honesty. I want loyalty. I want a guy who reads the Bible. A guy. Have you met this guy yet, or or do you still believe that guy's out there? Uh, ah! Um. I think that I, I think that I've changed a lot about what my criteria is. Um. I have realized that sometimes the most charismatic men are borderline fucking sociopaths. Um, so that is something that I kind of like this, that's not like high on the requirement list, that whole honesty thing. Uh, you gotta, you gotta be careful what you ask for when it comes to that honesty thing, because you don't know how that person's going to deliver it. Um, all I really want is somebody who's going to like be my fucking, you know, my, my ace, my partner in life, my, my, my person who is gonna, you know, just, just, just just be a witness to my life. You know what I mean? Um, somebody that wants to elevate with me spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially. I can't fuck with a dude who does not want to chase multiple bags because that is where I'm at. So you're not, you're, you're not interested. I told my daughter today, she's 14. And she was like, you know, and all these girl rappers, they're talking about they won't be with a broke guy. That they wanted this, and I looked out and said, "Listen, you better not be with a broke guy. Like, I, I, like I tell my daughter, fourteen years old, you better not come in here with a sucker for love with a broke guy. I don't give a fuck. I tell any female in my family, you have to level up. Okay, like, so wait, you... wait, so so wait. Let's uh, let's talk about broke. What does broke mean? Does broke mean he's like?" A fireman or a UPS driver? Broke is saying or... what you just said. No, I'm not. I'm okay. not mad at a nine to five. But okay. you saying you like a guy who's aggressive, 
who likes uh that isn't just you know you don't want the guy who got a good job but he's playing the xbox in front of you all day and he's 30 something 40 years old you don't yes. want that guy you yes. want a guy that's trying to open businesses trying to go you know uh you you don't want a broke guy it's, it's, right it's, it's and I tell all my cousins that, my goddaughters, I tell them, and I don't care who. I mean, who? the thing, I, 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 want, I want somebody who has- Shout like, out to Timbo the King, Timberland on the checking, but guy. Hey, Tim. Uh, I want somebody who is ambitious and driven in nature. You know, somebody who is, you know, um, intellectually curious all the time. One thing I cannot t tolerate is somebody who thinks that they have all the motherfucking answers in life. One thing I have definitely realized is the older that I get, the less I fucking know. I'm a student of life forever. I am constantly, if I can't physically read a book because I'm too busy, I'm listening to Audible in my car. I'm listening to stuff on YouTube. I'm doing everything that I can to expand my horizons. And also I'm very, 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 very conscious of every single minute that I am spending w while I'm on this earth. I mean, because, you know, a lot of people know that I was in a car accident almost three years ago that almost took my life. And then almost like a year and a half later, my mom was diagnosed with a ex very aggressive form of cancer that took her inside of seven months, 2000. The last three years have been extremely difficult, but what it has really shown me is that we, we act like we have tomorrow promised. We act like we have five minutes from now promised. And that is not true. So I am extremely cognizant of how I spend every single moment of my life in a very intentional manner. So if I wanna lay on the fucking couch and be a couch potato for the day, you better believe I intended to fucking do it and I'm gonna do it. You to planned that it. That, that's but, how, that, that's how I am. Okay. And I find myself, now that I'm older, enjoying the air enjoying the music like i just enjoy everything and i'm just i'm like you said nothing's guaranteed i'm trying to be uh as happy as i can be i believe happiness is the true currency uh, in amen. life amen and whatever makes you happy if it's reading if it's doing whatever you do exercising whatever makes you happy is the true uh currency in life and yeah. and so you you went through this near death experience. Yeah. Uh and I was with you. Like I like 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 when I go through this story, um I'm with you. I understand what you're saying, right? Mm -hmm. And so you got you you're this beautiful this girl, you had this excellent life, uh, and you wake up and you got the you in a coma, you got that. The thing, your head, you know, because everybody knows you for being beautiful, yeah. right? Yeah, your head's it's cracked scary. open. Yeah, um, you, you know, oh, uh, you gotta teach yourself how to speak, how to walk on the walker. You gotta. This is this is a horrible time. Yeah, um, and I know, I know from watching you today. You know, Melissa Ford's been my life today, right? That. You've been fighting depression a long time. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and, and yeah. what and what 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 at that time you depressed? What what are you? What are you feeling? You, when the when the accident happened and dealing yeah, with you got to come then. back. You, what are you feeling? What is because I just had a show, I think last week or two days ago, where I talked about I went through depression for two years because I had lost my sister, my grandfather pun all in like a week yeah right? yeah and so i went two years of therapy i went through depression <clears throat> what was depression like for you what was the symptoms well when it came to my car accident part of my depression was you know was was really was chemical you know it was physical and chemical because my natural mood stabilizers my serotonin and dopamine receptors had been compromised due to my traumatic brain injury. My head was slammed off the pavement of the 134 freeway here in California. You know, so my head was cracked open. My brain was bleeding. Um, I had a massive concussion. I was walking with a walker for uh, a month. Um, like shit was shit was fucked up. 
Um, and so the depression that I faced was, was very, was, was chemical, you know? Um, and I, I had always fought depression in the past, you know, like I white knuckled it through my problems. I just, I felt like taking medication was, um, was for suckers, you know, it wasn't for me. I was tough. And if I, if I started taking medication, then I was a pussy. That was how I thought. And I had to have a doctor, like, have a conversation with me, like, Melissa, if your arm's broken, like, are you going to get it casted? I said, yeah. They're like, well, like, th think about the same thing that's going on with your brain. It is broken. It needs to be healed, you know? And so the depression was, uh, it, 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 I call it a monster that I was confronted with that I did not know how to fight. And um, I, I, I contemplated suicide to the point where my friends came over to my house and wouldn't leave me for three days. They did shifts because um, they knew that um, if they left me alone in those, in, during those days, I probably would have harmed myself. Um, I felt like I couldn't see tomorrow. Um, I, I, I just, I felt like there was no purpose for me to be on this planet le anymore. I felt like there was... Um, and you went through, Melissa, you went through actually thinking of how you would take your life? Yeah, I, I, I thought about, um, you know, just a lot of pills, opioid, opioids and, um, and just chasing it with some vodka and, and going the fuck to sleep. You know, I, I thought about um, hanging myself. I thought about, you know, uh, driving into, into traffic. Like, I, th I thought about the, the most insane shit, but... Part of the reason why a lot of people also can contemplate suicide is they feel like they're a burden to others. They want their pain to end and they feel like they're a burden to all of their friends and their family that they just feel like your lives will be so much better if I'm not here anymore and you don't have to worry about me. So I'm going to remove myself from the equation. And that's how, you know, when people say, oh, it was a selfish act for them to commit suicide. More often than not, that's not the way that they're thinking. They're thinking, I feel like I'm doing you a service by, by ending my own life so that you don't have to worry about me anymore. And that was how I was feeling. I was feeling insignificant. I was feeling empty. I was feeling, um, I, I, I was feeling unloved, unwanted. And I, I just couldn't see, I could not see how the future could brighten up for me. I couldn't see it. it, it it's, it's your mind is, is playing tricks on you. You know, and thankfully, I had the right medical professionals involved in my life. I had I had a wonderful group of friends that took very, very good care you know, of me. You know what I say all the time every night before I end the show mm. is let your darkest moments bring your most clarity. Yeah. Yeah. And so and so what I mean is it's when you down and out. It's when you in your toughest time. And you look around you and you see who's really there for you, who really holds you down. And then you get to see the people who really don't have your back or just there for a look or for the moment or whatever the case. Yeah. You know, God has a way of showing you who's really there for you, who's really your people. Yeah. So, you know, um, it, it's crazy because with this world of social media, uh, did you feel people clout chased your accident? I, what, what was fucking crazy to me was how quick people were to insert themselves into my tragedy by way of posting me and talking about me in the captions, but they never called me. They never texted me. They didn't send nary a fucking flower to my hospital room, and they knew where, where I was. So I just was like, where they do that at? Like, what kind of shit is that? And it just, it, it, it just, it just exemplified how fucked up social media is and what it, what it does to, to the average person, you know, like wanting to have a look, you know what I mean? Like, and, 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 and maintain a facade. It was such bullshit. I was, I, I, I was furious. I was furious. I, I lost friends at the time people that I just couldn't speak to anymore after that because I was rightfully, like, rightfully so yeah. now do you think let me let me play devil's advocate do mm -hmm. you think 
that we're living in a society, because I ain't going to lie, I've been guilty of posting a friend of mine for their birthday and not calling them that day, feeling like I said happy birthday. You know, yeah. and some people with the social media, they're like trying to wish you well. Uh, and, and, and even though they didn't call you, they thought they did the right thing. You you don't share that same... Uh... You know, I think a birthday wish is different from, you know, like, you know, somebody's almost fucking dying and then they post a picture of you and but then they and they don't say hey by the way you good you know it's 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 a little bit less you know like there's times where I, like i've posted on somebody's page like oh the happiest of birthdays and stuff like that sometimes it's easier for us to just like post it there because we know they're gonna see it you know what i'm saying i see a lot of my own birthday wishes that people didn't you know text me on my page and it's fine like i, I don't think that that's like a really um, big deal. But I do think that social media has like altered the way that we in interact with each other, like t to a really strange, in a really strange manner. Like people break up with each other on fucking social media. Like they make this, these this posts. corny, this, and I'm this, like, this, wait, this, this shit here. Believe me, if I break, break up with my <laughs> wife, it won't be on Instagram talking about, you know, all these years later, I have to, nah, it ain't gonna happen like that. Yeah, and it gets, it gets to the point where you wonder, look, this is the fucking problem. You wonder what's real and what's not anymore. Like, here's a good example. No shade, because I don't know the situation at all, other than what they've shown us at Safari and Erica Mena. That he gets online and decides to tell everybody that marriage was the worst thing that he ever did. And I'm like, uh... Shouldn't Erica be the first person and the only person you kind of say that to? But hey, what do I know? I'm not in your fucking relationship. And then she comes on and then she's just like, well, since you want to be a bitch about it and tell everybody on social media, blah, 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 this, that, the other. And they're going on and on and on. And for a second, I'm sitting here thinking like, is this for the next season of Love and Hip Hop? Like, we can't help but think that, right? You know what I mean? So I'm you know what happened? You know so what now happened we're just to like, me. what the fuck is real and what's not real? You, you know, know what, what happened mean? to me? Uh, something that happened really, really local. Mm. Um, and this is where I, I discovered it. Uh, I was shooting, um, I was in Puerto Rico shooting the Netflix series with Spike Lee. Um, she's got to have a season two. And then this kid dies. He was tragically murdered in the Bronx. His name was Junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Junior. And I oh my saw God. everybody and their mother show up with his mother, post them in every language, come over there to photo ops of all photo ops, the this, this, this. And that's when I realized, I said, yo, they come chasing death. Like, yes. they don't yes. know this kid. Are they going to talk to his mother a year from now? I mean, and I had a real problem. And being that I was far away from New York, uh, I really could see clearly what was going on. And I was like, yo, this shit is crazy. And yeah. it seems like people will clout chase death. They will yeah. clout chase any situation yeah. to, to make them look good and, and their lights to go up or some shit. The reality of the situation is, is that as human beings, we have natural, we have instincts, you know what I'm saying? And one of our worst instincts is narcissism. It is. And social media feeds that fucking monster, you know, to the point where we lose sight of, of our own morality, I think, at times. And I, and I use we in a general sense, you know, there's some people that, you know, they have their own set of rules as how they will operate online. Um, I'm one of them. I have very specific rules as to how I will operate online. There's a reason why nobody ever sees a man on my page. And that is because it's none of y'all's motherfucking business who's dicking me down. Okay? But let me ask you something, Melissa. Hold on. Because <laughs> I got different views on this thing. I get Good. it because you don't know because of past relationships if you're going to break up with this man. But if you have a man, like, we see these girls in all these exotic vacations, there's a guy behind that camera 
who's yeah. taking him to these exotic vacations, or when they're eating the lobster and they show his hand. And, 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 and I think, you know what I think about that shit, right? And so at what point do you, and same thing with the guys, whenever it's like Valentine's and a motherfucking gotta post this girl, you be like, oh shit, I ain't know he had a, a wife or girl. Like, what? what is it on social media when, uh, is there a way to say, like, do women, is that, is, is that a way of saying I'm not showing them because I don't want nobody to know my man? Or you just don't want to show the dude because he might fuck up the other dudes that like you? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not worried about that shit. Men, <laughs> one thing that you could be for certain is men are not worried about another man in your life, okay? They're still going to shoot their motherfucking shot. They don't care, okay? So I'm never worried about that. For me, it's... um. First of all, like, until I know it's super, super real, then there's nothing to discuss. Social media cannot play a role in my relationship because I feel like it. once it does, it alters the relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just, we're, we're not, we're not for, we're not, you know, I'm not serving myself up for public consumption in that manner. I take my photos. I do my show here at the Black Report. I do my podcast. You know, okay, like okay, there, okay, because like that. We, 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 but probably, I, got, I, we, we, I gotta keep something for me. I have, to, there's gotta be a line. There has all right, to be. okay, Melissa, I'm not gonna for go me. there, right? For me. Um, I want to talk about my guy, okay. Jason Lee. Mm -hmm. This guy looking fucking amazing these days. He he, 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 he making me try to get on some type of diet. How the fuck he lose all his weight? He's looking amazing. Like, what, what, what's up with Jason Lee? Like, I mean, he looks like a model. Well, um, two things. Uh, he was very um, candid about his um, uh, gastric sleeve operation. Which oh, so he him, did the operation. Yeah, which allowed him to lose uh, a, a significant amount of weight. Um, and uh, two... I left Hollywood Unlocked in August, I guess. Um, yeah. So you're not doing Hollywood Unlocked no more? Nope, I quit. So what are you doing now? Well, I am here at Fox Souls Black Report because <laughs> we just wrapped our show. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, I've, I've always wanted to expand my repertoire and I really wanted to start And so that's what that's what I deliver every single day, five days five days a week, Monday through Friday, four p.m. PST. Say it again because somebody called you right at that. What, what, I guess once I mentioned Jason Lee, okay. they, they, they calling you like yo 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 like. <laughs> Uh, so I'm on the Black Report. So Fox Soul is a is a new digital network. A lot of people know about it. Claudia Jordan has her show Out Loud with Claudia Jordan, Cocktails with Queens. Uh, Jeezy has a show on here. Angela Yee has a has a show. There's the Mix, Doc, uh, the Book of Sean. There's a bunch of shows on um, Fox Soul. So I'm on the Black Report, which is hard hitting news, and it's just something that um, I wanted to add to my professional repertoire was you know what i love is when i when i google you yeah. it says media personality because that's what i am <laughs> that's what i am you know uh, i mean like you know we're i mean today we were talking about the stimulus bill we were talking about um congress yeah we, that was the first thing i started the show with the stimmies is back yeah the stimmies yeah, we, I mean, is back yeah, we, I mean, we discuss politics at length. We talk about social issues. We had Desmond Mead on as a guest, um, you know, we, who's one of Time's most influential um, people, uh, you know, 100 most influential people, you know, who's, who's still working towards clemency, but yet he's about to be a New York Times bestseller. I mean, like, I, 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 we, we talked to Derek Johnson, the president of NAACP. Like, we talk about hard-hitting in, like you know um uh news here on the show so this mm -hmm. was just the direction that i kind of wanted to take with my life professionally you know that's so, what you gotta do and, and yeah. whatever makes you happy and, and and whatever 
wherever you want to take your legacy. I'll ask you one quick uh, question. Um, you worked Jay-Z, Pharrell, the biggest guys in the world. Who'd you wish you worked with in the video? Um, at the time, um, when I was doing music videos and stuff like that, Kanye. Because when Kanye came out, um, his videos, his music, it was so... It was so they it was so innovative and he was such a fucking genius when it came to his creativity and his vision. Um and he was so Yeah, I like, loved so, all so those videos control, like so hands on, you know, so you know, yeah. college dropout and, and late registration and uh, the joint with the girls in the in the gym, the, all those shits. He yeah. shot it so artistically uh beautiful. That 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 would be he was He's probably the last of that level of quality of video in that era that, yeah. that, that you was in. Yeah, I would, I would definitely have loved to have done one of his videos. However, we did end up doing Entourage together. So that, there's that. There's, he, it's, the, it's the final episode of season two where he's on a plane and the guys need to get to the Cannes Film Festival and they basically jump on his plane and I play a, a flight flight attendant. He he made that happen. So um so we actually did get to, you know, do something cinematically together, which was bomb. But yeah, I would have loved to have starred in one of his videos. Absolutely. Melissa Ford, thank you for coming on the show. Of course. Uh, could you tell them where to find you? Yeah. Uh tell them about the show again, plug it in. Cause okay. my audience is very loyal and they will follow you now. So okay. uh let them know where you be at. All right, well, hit me up on Instagram, um, at Melissa Ford, M-E-L-Y-S-S-A-F-O-R-D, and then download Fox Soul's Black Report, or, well, download Fox Soul app, and Black Report is on 4 p.m. PST, 7 p.m. EST, Monday through Friday, and yeah, get your hard-hitting news from a sassy motherfucker like him, like me. We love you, Melissa Ford. I love Thank you, you for today. coming on the biggest show in the game. I you gotta click you. off here because they got a new they got new things. You gotta click off. All right, let's let's see if I can figure this shit out because you know I'm like uh, the, <laughs> the youngins these days in technology. Now you did you did great. You clear. <laughs> you look great. <laughs> okay. Um, we love you. Okay. All right, I love you too. Bye, guys. All right, bye bye. Timbo the king.